Hello there, everyone. This is my red tier stone strategy video on how to do bosses and set up the red tier stone ring before them. Make sure to have uh, your shield at this point because you need to be able to block some parts. I have to have two pieces of armor on. I recommend standing at these stairs. Uh, it's a good place to be able to get hit through the wall by these guys. If you stand at the top, you can get hit by the arrow. And two-hand blocking with the catalyst is also very useful for when you need to take a lot of damage, but not too much. When you take just need to take a little bit, then you want to block with the shield. Well, as you can see, two-handing, uh, blocking with two hands at the catalyst. Which is nice results. You have to be very careful, though. This guy, you can dodge like that to take no damage from. If you need, m if you are just above 20%, you can take a hit from him. As well as blocking these two hollows. You just stand there, block the two. That will take a little bit of damage as well. And by the time you do that, that guy will have gotten out of the way. Especially you need to get under 20% before all the bosses to be able to do them optimally for optimal damage. And this is how we fight the gargoyles. All the bosses really telegraph their moves before they're about to do them. You can just see them, like, moving their arms or their weapons in certain patterns. Generally you want to stay, like, at max, uh, just uh, slightly, say, farther away than normal melee range. And then sort of just, like, roll backwards and cast magic. Roll backwards, cast magic. And should one of them start casting fire, don't be, you know, don't be afraid. You outrange the fire. That's how we kill the first one. And then the second one will make quick worker as well, because we're a sorcerer. And if you put all your points into intelligence at this point, your solar with the red tier ring does a lot of damage. As you see, they're here, here clearly, we outrange the fire. But just generally, learn the boss movesets. You have to really memorize them get, to get them all down really quickly and to not get hit at all. Uh, here, for Quelag, the red tier stone setup is actually really easy. Because the water wheel, you have a variable height. You can drop off at the water wheel at any point and to take the amount of fall damage that you want. And here, see? Well, I didn't actually have to take the second uh, amount of fall damage. But it's just if you need to get, if you have more health, then just drop down earlier. If you have less health, drop down later. As well as this swamp will do with a bit of damage. Should you f have forgotten, you can block with a catalyst against that doobie just passed by. Um, he'll take out a decent amount of your health. But hopefully, you didn't mess up and just, you know, took down the proper amount of fall damage. Now, for actually fighting Quelag, <laughs> it's real easy. You just sort of run up to her to make sure she doesn't do the jump attack. If she does, whatever. If you start speeding lava, and then just shoot her a few times because you can't really do anything up to this point still. You're saving time by shooting her. Right, now that she's actually focused onto you, sort of lead her to this part of the room. You make her you want to make sure that she does not at the bottom of this ramp shooting lava. Because there's a good chance if you do if she does shoot lava at the bottom, that the lava will glitch out and kill you. And that's something we do not want. Um, so you just sort of do a running jump up here and just stand here and just shoot her a bunch and every time you hit her you stagger her and she can't really do anything about it. This does more damage. And uh, it's real fast with the red tier centering and real safe. And again, just remember, lead her over here first so she doesn't like do ranged lava attack because that will just kill you most of the time. If you don't use the red tier stone ring, you will not have enough intelligence to be able to kill her with your 30 soul arrows. Now for Andre, just doing this quick setup here so that uh, people can not mess this up, is that you want to be at maximum range. Cast soul mass, soul arrow, and then just soul mass one more time. If you're too close to him, he'll just run up and kill you. Probably. Because his physical attacks are real strong. That's how you get the crest safely. And, uh, you know, make sure to... You, you just get the crest by killing him. You don't have to pick up the corpse. It just goes in your inventory. For Sif, the most consistent one... Uh, I've set up specifically this Titanite Demon. Just two hits. Well, he missed me there. Uh, just two ranged electrical hits. You're supposed to just kind of stand at the entrance of the room. You can kind of walk in slowly. If you're, ta if you're standing too uh, close to him as well, though... He um, won't shoot lightning, he'll walk up to you. But uh, taking two hits there um, will get you actually just above 20%. I, 
I made a mistake at this point. I forgot to put on the fap ring, and I also don't have all the pieces of armor on. I'm missing one. Um, so because of that, I took more damage than I was supposed to. I should have actually a little more HP for this part. If for some reason, you know, you forgot to go get him or don't feel like doing that, you could just take damage from these tree people. Just take unblocked hits. Like this first one specifically. Just sit here. If he does the grab attack, that'll also get down to 20% perfectly. However, the grab attack is real slow. And you have to be at full health when he's doing it. So basically, you just run through this place without taking any hits after that. Either by um, the Titan Demon or the first tree person. What you want to look for in routes specifically is points, points, it, places that you can take variable fall damage, similar to that water wheel. Places that you can take less or more fall damage depending on the needs and your current health status. For example, on this route specifically, there are two places coming up that we can take extra fall damage or take no fall damage. So if we're at 20%, we don't need to take any more fall damage. Um, here, just sort of like run this path. There's a small chance that that guy will get you, but if you roll at that point, he won't. If you run a little more to the left, there's a sm smaller chance that he'll shoot you or even aggro you. Run through straight. There's a little cliff you sort of walk over. Is it not so Talk to the cat. That drops aggro of all the enemies. Right here is a good example of a place that you can take variable fall damage. If you want, you can just walk off the edge. You can roll off on this, take less fall damage, or you can jump off for maximum, or just walk down the stairs for none. It's very handy. Uh, in this case, because two hits from the Titanite Demon, f falling off of here and then falling off of the next area will bring you down just enough to 20. And it's real fast. And of course, grab the stone armor. Because uh, we're not as good as the 108 run. We're not that professional. And so in that case, what we want to do is not do construction work next door. <sighs> um, for Neo and Four Kings, the super pro strategy would be to not do a stone armor, but use the red tier stone ring on them. But we're not that good. Right here is the second place that we can take variable fall damage. If you want, you can jump off, or you can run on the ramp over here. Take none. Should you find that you have messed up your numbers and are actually, you know, after a fall, still not at 20%, you can run back up and just fall again. You can repeat this as many times as you need to. Once we're actually fighting Sif, like before, as you can, before all bosses that is possible to, cast Homing Soul Mass. That means it will already be up by the time the fight starts. You can't do this walking through a fog door, but some bosses you can do it beforehand, like that. The Sif also, general strategy, watch his movements, all of his attacks are horribly telegraphed. Stay just um, within melee range, just at the edge of it. You basically cast Soul Mask, walk into melee range, he swings, roll backwards, cast it again. Just keep doing this, he won't hit you. Sometimes he does a normal swing, sometimes he does a 360. Just roll backwards every time. And I got a perfect Sif there. If you do it really fast, you won't even notice you have killed him. I thought I had to hit him one more time there, but it's just stay at the maximum melee range, roll back, cast your soul mass, roll back in. It's real easy. Right, for this part, if you haven't gotten down to 20% HP from some combination of the boulder or the arrows right after the boulder and sends, this archer right here is the perfect spot. You just sort of, well, firstly, get him out of the way so you can actually run through. And then just let him shoot you to, um, you know, down to 20%. So you have to be careful here at this point. Because there's a chance that he'll, his next shot will just kill you. Because he, he has powered up shots as well as normal shots. So you just block when you get real low with the catalyst. For Iron Golem, it's fairly simple. Be careful at this point. If you're not quick enough, uh, the <laughs> axe the rage attack will actually kill you here. But just sort of... Cast Soul Mass, run towards him. Cast Soul Mass. Just keep your distance. Stay out of range. And just keep casting Soul Mass, running away. If you get too close to the wall, then you can uh, just roll underneath him. Which, in this point, I didn't have to. And if you want, you can also Soul Arrow between your Soul Masses for even uh, a speedier Iron Golem. Right, for... Orange Seed and Small, or Pikachu and Snorlax, or Biggie Smalls. Basically, uh, I found the most consistent way is blocking this guy twice with the Catalyst. It brings you down. It's pretty consistent, I found, except for if he does the Shield Bash. In that case, just roll away. 
And then, um, this little bit of fall damage doesn't really do much. However, here's another point coming up. Variable fall damage. That, uh, we can just take a nice fall right here, and this will bring us down just perfectly 20%. And if you need even more damage, you can take a slightly bigger fall, or you can even make a, a running jump for maximum fall damage. Alright, so for Ornstein and Smo, as you enter in, watch Ornstein. Look if he's charging, if he's not cast Soul Mass. He's not in this case. Otherwise, wait for him to charge in and then roll away. Basically, it's you watch for when he's done an attack, then cast Soul Mass. And try to keep as far away from, you know, Smo as you can. Uh, that was basically a perfect Ornstein. Normally, it would take a little more rolling around and finagling around pillars. But basically, for him, you just sort of, like, cast Soul Mass face away and then turn in when you need to. Or just target him. Stay on the other side of the pillar. He's real easy. And now, f the best way to get the down 20% here, if you want to try Seath, is this drop right here. Here's another variable drop. If you fall right at the corner, you take the least amount of fall damage. But if you fall upwards... Um, less into the corner, you'll take even more fall damage. However, for this boss fight, I don't actually recommend using the Red Tears Ring, but if you want to try it, that's the easiest way to set it up. Um, at this point, you should probably have a single piece of armor on the Crystal Halberd and the Shield. Because magic does not do that much. You can also take a running leap there to take a little more fall damage from that. Should you find yourself still not a 20% at bite here, because you messed up, then you're just going to have to block the clams with your shield or your halberd. I'm not sure actually how the halberd works this. You can just take some shield. I think they do pretty good damage through your shield even. So, um, do that. Or just, you know, not <laughs> kill them with your... <laughs> not kill them with the red tear stone ring because it's super risky. I don't know. Maybe I should try it. Also, beforehand, use a firekeeper soul and perhaps two firekeeper souls or a firekeeper soul and some humanity. So you have like five to you know ten humanity, just as a little bit of curse protection, um, so that you know if the worst comes to worst, you won't get cursed, which is bad. So what you should do is run in, smash the crystal, quit the game, and load back in, and make sure the moment you load back in that you go through that port, you go through the fog door. If you don't, the clamps will actually hit you. All right, this is run into Seath, hit the crystal, quit out, and then just run back in. The actual strategy for Seath here. You just do the same thing if you had the red tear stone ring. You wouldn't actually run into the center if you had the red tear stone ring because it's dangerous. The far, the more time you spend in the center, the more likely he is to do um, his massive AOE attack. He has this one AOE attack that fills the whole room with crystals, and that is terrible. But he will only do it if you are close to the center. And here it comes. See, I was within melee range of the center, so he's doing it. The thing is, his center takes thirty percent more damage than his tentacles would. So you want to hit it because you know it's a faster fight. However. You have to know when to do it, because if you miss, if you go in to, this, to fight the center at the wrong time, then he'll just do the AoE, slowing you down. So in that case, just as you're starting out, just hit this tentacle. Just stand right here, basically at this part of the tentacle, and stay on this side of it. Don't go behind the tentacle. If you go behind the tentacle, that'll bait out the melee. He slowly turns around, but you can just hit him a few times, run, or hit him a few times, run, run, just keep repeating that. He'll never really hit you. But again, there I went. I was too close to the center and he did the AoE. As long as you're standing in the correct position, he will not do this AoE. And that's basically a Seath fight. Just keep rinsing and repeating this. As you can see, I've not actually taken any damage yet. But you never know. The actual crystal blasts that he does, the nice, like, sort of angled ones, get real close to hitting you when you're here. See? It's like you almost get hit by them. And that's why I'm scared to use the Red Tear Stone Ring for this fight, for when that happens. But otherwise, just go in the circle and, you know, hit this part of the tentacle. And just keep hitting it with light attacks. If you keep doing that, then uh, he should never do his AoE, and uh, he should be golden. If you want, you can cast Soul Spear a few times onto his, like, center body beforehand, because Souls, if you have Soul Spear, because Soul Spears actually have some, does some half decent damage. thinking about maybe not even picking up Soul Spear during the run. It might be faster. I mean, it saves 40,000 souls. You don't necessarily need it if you're not going super pro strats for everything. Yeah, that's how you pretty, pretty easily kill Seath. I mean, I remember to bone after Seath, because we're warping back the Duke's archives anyway to go get the spells. 
Now for Nito, um, what you want to do is put the dagger in your right hand. It's very key, right hand. And the catalyst in your left hand. I'm messing up here. I got confused because I was thinking of older strategies. Um, one with your shield as well because you can only chant weapons in your right hand. And then, put on, of course, put on the stone armor because fucking hell, Nito does a lot of damage. Remember, dagger in the right hand, catalyst in the left. You can only enchant weapons in your right hand. Now here I am actually getting crystal magic weapon enchant selected. <laughs> right? Readying all my items and stuff. Um, well, you know, you can cast that beforehand just to deal with the skeletons a little easier. If you're lucky, Nito won't, uh, you know, do anything. If you run up to him immediately, um, like where I did, I took a few steps. He has, I think, a, the closer you are to him, less of a chance to cast the um, screaming, you know, sword dance thing that is real annoying. So the first thing you should do is run up a few steps. And basically just, uh, you know, run up to Nito and, as you can see, stab him to death. Ah, when you're low on stamina, you know, heal. And during, you know, your Estus animation, you will recover a lot of stamina. This is not the super pro fastest route, but it's pretty consistent, let me tell you. If you want, you could also cast more soul masses and your good soul spears, but <coughs> this is just really easy. Right here. It's just like, just, just chain your dagger. Um, and of course, put your good armor back on. I'll quickly explain what the Japanese player does. Um, they get a red tear stone ring from the pinwheels, I think, beforehand with some fall damage. Um, however, uh, because those skeletons are attacking you as well, you will die very quickly because, you know, you only have 20% of your HP. So, what the Japanese player... I, I keep assuming he's Japanese, Sophie Gamer. Um, what the Japanese player does is um, grab the s talk in New Launder Ruins, which I grabbed just for showing off purposes, uh, because it's a fancy weapon. It's one of the few weapons in the game you can attack while blocking. So you just sort of stand there, block, and enchant, enchant it, block... Wait, I actually don't think remember if you enchant it or not. Yeah, you do. Enchant it, block, hit the skeletons to kill them, and then, once all three are dead, you go on to town on Nito with your super red tear stone magic that is horribly broken. And it'll kill him very quickly. Basically that. However, I use stone armor. It's a safer strategy. Way more consistent. For four kings, once you're through the fog door. Super optimally, you'd actually equip the stone armor uh, during the fog animation and then fall off. However, just for the sake of setup and to explain everything... Um, sort of similar thing. Put on all your stone armor. And the dagger in your right hand. You can find the dagger in your inventory. And this fancy catalyst in your left hand. Put that on. Put on weapon enchant. Make sure to have the abyss ring on by this point. Because otherwise it's going to be real bad if you don't. And then fall down and try not to die. Keep falling, falling... Enchant your weapon. Um, before they spawn, you should always cast uh, Soul Mass because you know it's free extra damage. And put your um, you know shield back on for extra stabbing power. Block the magic. You definitely want to block the magic because and you want to roll past the first hit because the damage they do is based on the distance you are away from them. So if I should really should be attacking here, but I blocked whatever. Um, the farther you are away from them, the more damage their melee attacks do. So if you're just standing in melee range, you do very little. So that's why I just keep stabbing him. Similar to Nito. Um, is that, uh, you know, you want to stab a bunch and then heal. The corpses of the dying four kings take damage. Um, so the actual super pro strategy would be to stab them a bunch. And then as they're dying, stab them twice and then cast Crystal Soul Spear. However, we here kind of mess that up a bit. Forget that. So instead, we just do the stab strategy. And it's just stab, 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 stab. Keep stabbing the corpse. And as you can see, it does a lot of damage. Heal between bosses, of course. Crest. You know, soul mass beforehand. And then just sort of sit here, because sometimes they take a while to spawn <laughs> if you kill them too quickly. Um, as you can see here, my daggers actually run out of enchantment. If you really want, you know, if you for some reason are going to, if you miss with your soul spears, you can pull out the crystal halberd and kill them pretty quickly. Um, you can actually physically attack with your uh, catalyst. It doesn't do bad damage. Or better yet, you could just put out your other catalyst on. The one that you started the game with. 
and use the weapon enchants from that. For example, here you see I actually messed up. And, uh... <laughs> should I, If I attack with a catalyst, I might have been able to kill him. So here, I have two more soul masses, and I know at least one of them is going to hit. But I could have instead more optimally gotten three kings by killing that one quicker. And if I wanted safer strats, I could have pulled out the other catalyst and enchanted the dagger again. Because when you put the other one on, it'll still have one weapon enchant on. Because this thing halves the number of spellcasts you have, but that uh, enchant has three. And, you know, it uses two if you use the good catalyst and you still have one left over for the bad catalyst. Alright, so the red tear stone ring <laughs> um, set up for this boss. As soon as you have all the armor on. It's really easy. You just sort of run up to this guy. Stab. I accidentally have the uh, a soul mass moment. That's really it. It's just that easy. Now for actually fighting Gwyn, it's going to be a little tricky. <laughs> you sort of just avoid these guys anyway. Just roll, roll. Um, for actually fighting Gwyn, I've developed a new strategy the other day that involves not parrying. Preferably, what you do is when you're Tearstone in, run in, cast Soul Mass, parry, cast Soul Spear, and hit him again with something else. Um, kills him real quickly. I found a no... no parry strategy. You run in, keep running, cast Soul Mass, keep running, run, dodge backwards, shoot Soul Spear, miss on purpose. Well, actually, I hit him here, which messes it up, actually. You're supposed to miss. He does his dodge animation, which then freely lets you hit with both Crystal Soul Spears. But the idea there was what I was supposed to do was shoot Soul Spear, he dodges, missing on purpose. And then I can hit him when he lands with the Crystal that staggers him. And then you can hit him with the second Crystal and he just dies. Mess that up, though. Um, or you can do the slightly slower way of Soul Mass Roll, Soul Mass Roll, Soul Mass Roll. Keep doing that a few times. And, um... Be very careful when you cast Soul Mask, because the moment you start casting, there's a good chance he'll just run up and stab you and kill you. You have to sort of learn the timings on that. Or better yet, just learn the parry strat. <laughs> the thing is that my game runs such a bad frame rate that it's bloody, like, not <laughs> feasible, I think, for me to learn the parry strat here. But that's the that's how you do all the bosses as a tier, and all the red tier stone setups as a sorcerer. Hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope it, uh, you know, helps you in your speedruns. Go watch part one, tips and tricks, if you haven't already. <laughs>